Okay, so hello, let's start. Hello and welcome to uh, scores number eight, Lures of Speculation. Tonight's program will start with the lecture of Christian Felber, who is here to hold the lecture, uh, Money, the New Rule, Rules of the Game. So that's also the name of his newest book. And let me say some words about Christian. He is uh, the co-founder of Attack Austria and uh, also initiator of the alternative economic concept, economy for the common good, Gemeinschaftsökonomy, uh, uh, Gemeinwohlökonomy. Gemeinwohl <laughs> and uh, also initiator of the bank for the common good. He teaches at the Vienna University of Economics and Business and uh, has already written plenty of books, so as I said, this newest book is Geld, die neuen Spielregeln. Yeah, and I'm really happy to have Christian here because we know already since many, many years, he is a passionate contact improvisator and uh, he is here on a regular base in the professional training program, so for the first time holding the lecture and tanz squad here, thank you for coming Christian. And in the end of his lecture, he will have a talk with uh, the choreographer and performer, Daniel Ashwanden. So. Okay, thank you, Katrin. Thank you, Tanzquartier, for inviting me. And thank you, everybody, for coming and joining this um, hopefully um, pleasurable lecture in English. One hour, it's a very um, short um, space of time, and I hope we can use it fruitfully and uh, enjoy it deeply. <laughs> Um, it's usually I crawl around on the floor here, as Katrin said, in the morning. I wasn't here today, but yesterday, the last time I crawled around, with a <laughs> we improvised a little bit. Yes, and today I have the honor to speak a little bit about my political work, um, book number 13, A New Monetary Order. I think we need a new monetary order, specifically um, and more generally a new economic order. Um, mm, my most important activity at the moment is the creation of the economy for the common good, Gemeinwohlökonomie, which is an alternative economic model, a complete and coherent one, both an alternative to capitalism and communism. And it's not only a theoretical idea, but it's also a practical implementation and co-creation process, <laughs> meaning that uh, more than 1,500 private and public companies have joined this process. You can visit them on our website, Economy for the Common Good. And also the first six political municipalities have joined the process and are eager to become um, municipalities for the common good. As well as universities, um, many universities have joined and we are already creating a UNESCO chair. You know, UNESCO is the United Nations organization for education and culture. And uh, we are creating a UNESCO chair um, for the economy for the common good at the University of Barcelona uh, this moment. Spanish, what was I studied in um, my academic career, I wanted to study universal uh, sciences, universology. But uh, then I went to the universities and they said, universology, universal sciences, Pff, that's the wrong address. And I thought, but then why do you name yourselves universities? And uh, they said, there is no further meaning. It's just, um, they forgot what the ma name means. University is composed by um, two words and it contains universe. And universe is another composed word composed by unum and versum in Latin. And it means one single verse, one single song. And uh, that's what I was interested in, to understand, to recognize what is the inner, the most intimate coherence of the universe, of the world. But uh, universities don't teach this anymore. They just uh, teach very sharply separated parts of the whole. And uh, I was not interested in learning one of those sharply separated parts of the whole. I proposed to rename them in multiversities or polyversities and perversities because their original sense of um, showing access or offering access to the whole has literally, literally, um, etymologically, etymos the truth and logos the word 
um, from showing the access to the hole into showing only the access or offering the access to to the to the single parts. And academic economic science is just a very narrow part of the whole, and that's why I didn't study economics. I <laughs> I didn't uh, study nor micro nor, not nor macroeconomics. Um, but now I yeah, have the honor to teach at the Vienna University of Economics and Business because my uh, approach to economy, a holistic approach, the re-embedding of the economic both science and practice in the ethical context of society, in the democratic context of society and in the ecological context of the whole planet and, and more is, uh, is an, a new approach, uh, a widening of the horizon that is also um, welcomed by, uh, by the, ec the economic um, science and yeah so I, uh, I, I am fulfilling this task to, to widen the horizon of uh, the economic uh, thinking and practice and part of the model of the economy for the common good economy for the common good maybe uh, just two, two, uh, two tiny thoughts about that uh, the main thing that economy for the common good does is um, to put in the right order um, the values, the goal and the means of the economy. Three uh, core elements that are totally mixed up at the moment. <laughs> if you ask an, uh, a professor at university which are the goals, which are the, the values and which are the means of the, of the economy, they won't be able to give you a, a precise uh, and a comprehensive answer. And uh, the only thing we did is we looked it up in the constitutions of democratic um, states, and the constitutions are totally clear about the values, the goals, and the means of the economy. The values are human dignity, solidarity, justice, sustainability, democracy. The goal is the common good and money is the means. Uh, the economy as a whole is a means. It's not an end in itself. It's a means of a fruitful community of the democratic society, of human culture. It's an instrument. And money is an instrument of second degree. It's an instrument of the economy. So money has its role, but it should serve as an instrument for the economy, and the economy should serve as an instrument for human society. Mm, this is the, the wider um, vision and um, framework of the economy for the common good. And the economy for the common good is a complete and coherent economic model. But uh, we, we stress in every occasion that those 20 elements by which the economy for the common good is composed are not political demands like in a political party. They are just inspirations for a very broad democratic debate and decision-making process. And the only demand we have, we have a political demand to organize in the, in the most decentral possible level, which means in every local community, a democratic process to a democratic economic order a different, an ethical, a sustainable economic order. And part of this democratic economic order would be a democratic monetary order. This is the subject of this book. It is um, um, focusing one core element of the economic order, the monetary order. And it, um, it is composed again by, in this case, only 12 core elements of a possible future democratic uh, monetary order that is able to serve the good life, that is able to serve the democratic community, that is able to serve the common good, which is the overall goal of both the economy and the democratic society. If you ask or I could ask you, is someone totally satisfied with the present, with the current monetary order, the monetary system? Anyone thinks that it's fully just and stable and sustainable and democratic and transparent and 
no one would say yes. Huh? And I think that's uh, a very clear proof that time has come to design a different order. The impulse for starting this democratic design of a different dem monetary order is a deeply democratic impulse. We deem ourselves as free, as sovereign citizens of a democratic society, of a democratic state. But although no one is really satisfied uh, with the present economic and monetary order, we hardly do anything to design a different one and to think about the processes that could bring along a different economic and monetary order. This tiny little book <laughs> um, contains 12 core elements of a possible alternative monetary order, but this is the core of the book. And the framework of these 12 uh, issue chapters is a proposal for a design of a democratic process to get it. Because the best ideas are little useful if we don't have an idea how to implement them. And uh, the idea uh, 